Welcome everyone to an off-season Big Ten Network chat. We're actually getting closer to the preseason. Here with Chris Holman, the head coach of Ohio State. I'm Andy Katz. And Chris, uh, first off, what were your goals in the on the trip to the Bahamas? What did you want to get out of that trip? You know, I think, Andy, we got obviously a brand new group. So um, we have a few returners, um, but we have a brand new group. So the biggest thing was you know, getting uh, some questions answered, trying to figure some things out. We tried to play two teams that would resemble teams that you're going to play in the regular season, organized, coached, teams that have, you know, have have actually played together. Sometimes you don't get that when you're playing overseas. So, yeah, that was, that was the biggest goal. Obviously, you enjoy spending time together, but, you know, they spent the time together the whole summer. So <laughs> that wasn't – necessarily the the biggest priority the bonding part they did that all summer that's an element of it but we also really wanted to figure some things out in terms of how you know how we would play all right so let's answer a couple of these questions how are you going to play well listen i i think we did because of who we played we played the uh, egyptian national team and the puerto rican national team and both those i think were you know national teams that Again, it had structure and were coached and um, were organized. So we really got a chance to, and they were, the Egyptian team was really physical. So we were able to see some things without playing with Justice Suing or Seth Towns. You know, we saw some things out of four freshmen that we expect all to play in Bruce Thornton, Roddy Gale, Bryce Sensiball, Felix Akpara. Um, uh, Felix is a, is a 6'11 kid, uh, Bryce is a 6'6. Um, six, six, uh, kid and they can really score the ball. Felix is a, an elite shot blocker. Bruce is a point guard. And Roddy has the ability to play a couple of different perimeter positions. So all those were good as well as we saw some really good things out of uh, our three transfer additions. Um, Tanner Holden, uh, Sean McNeil, and Isaac Likely. All right, so let's go a couple of these. First off, the health of suing in towns. Where do we stand? Uh, as of now, both guys are are um, on making great progress. Uh, both guys were actually able to do um, a significant part of practices leading up to uh, the Bahamas. We just didn't feel like it was worth playing. And both guys are projected. I would say Justice is probably a little further ahead of Seth right now. Um, and... I think the the question about justice is just, you know, how is his body gonna gonna respond? But he is he'll be he'll be ready to go. Uh, we firmly believe that. I would assume by the start of practice. I think the question with Seth is uh, is is maybe more significant in the fact of okay, how is his body going to deal with the wear and tear of of uh, a season? All right, three transfers. Obviously, transfers are all about fit and need. Uh, with Holden, McNeil holding a score, McNeil a little bit more of a shooter, likely obviously can give you some rebounding and a little bit more. Um, where do they fit on this roster? Well, they they fit real, real needs, you know, given kind of what we lost with, with um, you know, so many guys that provided so much, EJ and Kyle Young and Justin, Justin Arns and Jamari and obviously Malachi's emergence uh, as as a, such a good player um, as a freshman, you know, just kind of as a baby. So we we have a we had a lot of needs we needed to address. We we like the idea of bringing in a, a big freshman class. We did that. We intend to do do that again. But uh, Sean will provide immediate shooting um, at one of the wing positions. Tanner is going to provide the ability to play downhill. He also shot it pretty well in the Bahamas um, and gives us an athletic wing. Um, and Ice is a kid who, you know, really you can play as many as three to four different positions and we will move him around from, you know, point to wing to, you know, some small ball options. We'll move them all over the floor. Uh, Zed Key um, has great leadership skills. Uh, how did that evolve, emerge to where he can take on that role? I think he's got to grow into that, uh, Andy. I, I think that, 
Zed's one of the most likable kids you'll ever be around. You'll ever coach. You'll ever spend like, he's an unbelievable kid. He is the most likable kid. He spent his first two years kind of being uh, this, this young kid who's a little bit gregarious and, you know, has, has a lot of fun. And now he's moving into a, a, a role where he's going to have to bring a mature approach every day to what in, in order to lead effectively. So I think that's, uh, that's what we're looking at. He had a good summer, really good summer, but the consistency of effort, the consistency of impact in terms of his play and then in his leadership is something that he's, he's got to answer. I don't think that's something we can say right now and say, yes, that's, I mean, this is his first time being in that role. What are the chances that one of these freshmen um, could have a Malachi Branham like season? Well, you know, it's hard to project that big 10 freshman of the year, first round draft pick just outside the lottery. Like that's a lot to put on, um, you know, a freshman. I, I think um, Dutch, right. When you, when you whittle that down to ha- who actually does that in terms of all the high, well, I mean, that's a little bit of extreme. I was thinking more like someone who maybe you weren't expecting suddenly has a major role, yeah. which is what happened with Malachi okay. as the season yeah. progressed. No, if you frame it like that, I'm, you know, and obviously we want them all to have a Malachi type freshman year, but yes. if you frame it like that, sure. Um, I think all four will have a real impact. I really do. Um, listen, anytime you're a big kid, it takes you a little bit longer. So Felix's transition might be a little more significant. He's 6'11", about 215 to 17 pounds. He's still figuring things out, but he's going to play. Uh, Bryce can score the ball right away. As a freshman, he's got to continue to grow in other areas, but he is in a really talented score. Roddy provides great uh, uh, ability to kind of play off the ball. I think all, and then Bruce obviously is ready to go at the point. All four guys, I really believe, will have moments this year where they'll uh, they'll help us significantly. I'm trying to think. When's the last time? Not an excuse, but when's the last time you've had a full season? with health wise healthy team with the roster you anticipated at the beginning of the season i would say um our first and third years probably um uh, i would say those those two years our third year was probably our at least on paper probably our best most complete team. That was the pandemic season that got canceled. We were playing our best there. We won nine of our last 12 in the big 10. Um, And we were really balanced. We were top 25 in offense and, and top 25 in defense or there about that. So that was probably our most complete team. Um, But I would say one of those two years, it's a part of it. I I do think, uh, as you know, um, we, we've been, we've been hit pretty hard with it. You know, we had two season ending injuries last year, which, you know, you typically will never have in a career, um, but um, nagging injuries with, with, uh, yeah, Kyle, with Kyle. With the concussion. Yeah. Yeah. And that was significant. We all know the impact he made, but you know, I was, I was really proud of him. He obviously made a difference in the Loyola game. We saw the impact he made and in the Villanova game. Um, we, we saw the difference that he could make. Um, and I, I was really proud of uh, kind of how he and, and, our, and our guys responded after we, we took a couple losses there late in the year. We came out and we really did play well uh, in those stretches of uh, tournament games for sure. So I know he's one of your favorite people. Uh, I absolutely loved covering him. Uh, and it just made me sick, you know, with EJ getting a season ending injury before he has a chance to show what he really can do. But why do you believe a year from now, if that's what it is, that he can come back and be an NBA player that's going to have an impact? Yeah, EJ is going to be a 10, 10 to 12 year NBA player. I firmly believe that now he's he'll prove it. I guarantee you he'll prove it. And, and he knows he's, he's got to stay focused on the task at hand and the day uh, in front of him and nothing else. And right now that's his rehab. He's going to be a 10 to 12 year pro. Um, He can score the ball right now at that level. Uh, I really believe that he can provide offense uh, right now. I think uh, figuring out where he's obviously got tremendous timing, uh, as a shot blocker as well, you know, figuring out the, the aspects of the game. He's, he's going to be an elite teammate. He's going to understand 
you know, we talk about this all the time. What is it like 80% of the NBA's role players? Okay. EJ has the ability and the mental capacity to go from being an elite college player to understanding he's going to play a role in the NBA. And that's a, that can be a hard transition um, for him. He'll figure it out uh, when he gets healthy. He's really going to help that franchise. All right, your schedule, again, as always, you expect that with the Ohio State University, uh, is loaded. Um, you know, CBS Sports Classic, you get the return game with Duke. Uh, how ready is this group, you think, going to be for the schedule that you've now got in front of them? Probably not not quite as ready as we need to be, to be honest with you. Um, I think the, um, yeah, the schedulers, they, they put it on us here uh, with, uh, with the return game. Uh, with with Duke and then obviously playing uh, playing Carolina and and we've got some you know Maui's going to be phenomenal you know I watched San Diego State who we open with they're 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 terrific they're going to be a top fifteen uh, program I think so um, it's great that we'll get that those kind of tests early um, and obviously we have some early season games at home um, so. I think, Andy, um, you know, the exciting thing when you have a bunch of new faces and when you have a young team is, okay, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of time to figure things out, but you do in, in a sport that is, spans two semesters have a chance to say, okay, what can we become come January and February? And just like we said, you know, with Malachi as a young player last year, now you say it as a group and you say it with multiple guys and it's exciting uh, for, for that. But uh, there's no question that I think early uh, there's going to be some challenges put in front of us, both in terms of our schedule and just the fact that um, uh, we're going to be young. And, and uh, I think with that could be there could be some inconsistency. Uh, we'll have to figure that out uh, as we get moving throughout the year. All right. Last thing, I had a chance to catch up with you on the additions of UCLA and USC. Two years from now, uh, you've coached in leagues that have changed and back and forth, yeah. uh, schools that have moved around. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on what that will be for the Big Ten, adding two perennial, not just brand names, historic programs, but tournament-type teams uh, to that schedule slate in a couple of years? Love it. Love it, Andy. Man, I think it's a, it's a great move by Commissioner Warren, by, uh, you know, our, you know, obviously we, we have – I think the best AD in the country in, in Gene Smith, obviously I know he was involved in those kind of conversations. So I think I love it. I love the fact that, um, that this is, we, we know that this is where um, college athletics is headed. And we also, I think if you know college sports, you know what this is driven by in a lot of ways. And, and obviously for football's at the forefront of that, but um, this day of national uh, conferences I think is um, we knew it was coming and uh, I think those are two institutions that really fit the model uh, and the framework of the Big Ten um, they'll be you know sure there's going to be scheduling challenges but the alternative was to, to stand pat and I'm not sure that was the best um, best thing to do so I, I applaud our commissioner I think it was a great decision I'm glad uh, those two schools great programs excellent coaches and it should be a real asset to our basketball um, brand here in the Big Ten well Chris I appreciate it hopefully everyone stays healthy and gets healthier and I know I'll see you soon I appreciate Andy enjoy the rest of the summer